morning, everyone. Dr. Christine Smith back for a really cool session today about your thyroid and all of the health that it affects in your body, how it can affect other hormones, how it affects weight loss. And we're going to be talking with Dr. Amy Horneman, who is not your average doc. She has a history in fitness competitions and she even has her own supplement line and a top-notch podcast called The Thyroid Fixer. So I'm going to go ahead and invite her on here because I think we'll have a really great talk. And I always, I get so many questions about thyroid and that is why I wanted to invite her on. And it's just, I think it's a misunderstood organ sometimes. And a lot of people don't always test it correctly. And so I think it can be like TSH and free T3 and free T4, but they don't always know things like reverse T3 or TPO antibodies or thyroglobulin antibodies. And it can be a major effect on your health. So hello, good morning, Dr. Horneman, how are you? I'm good. Oh my God. Call me Dr. Amy okay. or just Amy. Hi, How about Amy. that? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to just chat about this this morning. And I think you have a really deep knowledge base about one specific area. And I think that is lacking sometimes. And it, there's so many nuances, as you have said, in some of your work to the thyroid. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up in this niche and having this love for working on this? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, so many of us are here from a pain to purpose story, going through our own struggle and then realizing that the world needs help with what we just went through. So if we rewind, and I heard you talking, I was doing fitness competitions. I was. So 20 some years ago, we're talking a long time ago, I was doing figure competitions. So for those who don't know what that is, you have to diet down, you're eating chicken and rice and broccoli. And if you can imagine, and maybe some of you are in this position, eating that way, and then every time you step on the scale, it goes up. So you're putting in the work, you're going to the gym sometimes twice a day, you're eating perfectly, and that scale is going up, 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 up. It's ridiculous. I was getting frustrated. I was getting depressed. I was actually starting to get ashamed, which sounds so strange when I say it out loud, but it was because I was going to the gym working out and I felt judged by people. I felt people looking at me going, oh, she's eating those donuts or, you know, she's not working hard enough. So I just felt judged by the people around me as well. And then that just starts to kind of pile on the self-loathing. And I was really doing all the things. I was doing everything I should have been doing from a physiological standpoint to allow my body to get to a certain shape and athleticism. I've done it before. I did it multiple times before. And this was the one time that my body actually rebelled against me. So I did what we all do. I went to my doctor and I said, hey, this is going on. I need to know what's happening. My body is totally rebelling against me. They did some tests and who even knows? I mean, I, I look back now, I wish I could see those tests now. I wish I could see what they did. So they did some tests and they told me, you're normal, air quotes, normal, you're normal, everything is fine. And I walked out and I didn't accept that. You know, I knew I'm like second opinion time. So I kept going. I got a second opinion. I got a third, a fourth, <laughs> a fifth and a sixth. They all told me, you're normal, everything's fine. One told me to eat less and exercise more. Another one told me that it's all in your head. Another one told me that you're just getting older and I was in my twenties. So by that time, I was really starting to lose hope, which is, th that's one of the messages I preach to people all the time. You never ever lose hope. You don't stop. You listen to your body. You know your body better than anyone. I don't care what degree they have on their wall. You know your body better than anyone. So luckily, and I think about this all the time, Christine, I think, oh my God, what if I would have stopped at doctor number three? What if I would have stopped at doctor number five? Five, like that's a lot of people telling me that it's just normal, get over it. You just gotta deal with it. If I would have stopped, I wouldn't even be here today. I mean, I would have been 200 pounds, 250, tired, bald. I mean, I just think of the consequences to my body had I not been properly treated. So I found functional medicine at this point. 
I kept hearing, you know, like universe, God keeps talking to you. Kept seeing this name of a functional medicine guy in Pittsburgh. And he's no longer practicing. He's my mentor. He's retired. But I went to him and he changed my life. He saved my life. He did to me what I now do to other people. Listen, he sat down and listened to me. He spent time with me, not a seven minute visit from your PCP. He spent 90 minutes going through my labs, through my life, through my food, through my supplements, and just really putting the pieces of the puzzle together so beautifully that he put me on the right treatment. We did the right test, the right treatment, and here I am. I lost the weight. My life came back. My energy came back. My hair came back. I was able to focus again. My libido came back. And, and from that point on, I shifted careers because I was in, like I mentioned, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, major medical system and was misdiagnosed six times. So I thought how many other people, but mainly women, because this really hits women the most, how many people out there are suffering like this and they're accepting your normal, everything is fine. So that's how I landed in the space that I'm in today, helping other people. I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that story. It's, you know, you never learn more than when you're going through it in your own body. And um, sometimes I joke and I call it the practitioner rite of passage. Yeah. Like you can't really <laughs> yeah, have good. empathy for like what it. you're doing and working on with people until you have really been through it and really understand. And it's, it is amazing how many doctors you can go through. Like I was dealing with an injury and looking for some solutions. I went through 13 doctors until I found one that was like, I can fix that. It's like, great, you're my doc. And so you can go doctor shopping. Like I wanna give people permission for that. And that is a lot of why I bring all these wonderful speakers on this channel so that you know that they exist and where they are and how to find them. Because I, that's one of the comments I get the most is like, how do I find a good practitioner? So. I mentioned earlier that like I love teaching people about their body and how their body works and how their hormones and their organs work. So let's just start with like the fundamental question of what does your thyroid do? And I would just love to hear how you like to explain that to people. Yeah. So thyroid, it is the master gland, the master gland. It runs the show. It runs your body. So it controls your metabolism, your heart rate, your blood pressure, your body temperature. The, whether or not you poop every day is controlled by your thyroid as well because it controls the, the movement through the GI tract, your digestion. And then at a cell level, it's affecting your mitochondria. So our mitochondria produce ATP. And that really kind of fuels our body, gives us energy to get through your day. Uh, even brain, the brain itself has more receptor sites on it for thyroid hormone, the active thyroid hormone T3, than any other organ in the body. So it, you really have to think of the thyroid as controlling every aspect of your body. And when you think about it that way, when the thyroid goes hypo, hypo, low and slow, remember that hypo, low and slow, everything is slowed down. So metabolism, I mean, the big, big symptom that I hear a ton from my patients and from my audience is, weight gain, inability to lose weight, no matter what they do, just like I went through. So metabolism slows down. It doesn't matter how perfect your diet is. It doesn't matter how many sauna sessions you do or cold plunges, that's all great, but you're not gonna see a difference if your thyroid's jacked up. So metabolism, like we said, regularity every day, whether you poop or not, how you feel, depression, anxiety, hugely, hugely tied to to thyroid. I mean, a lot of the Band-Aid medications for thyroid, antidepressants, sleeping pills, the benzos, because the doctors don't test enough and look deep enough, and we'll talk about that, to actually say, hey, this person has a thyroid problem. They just go, symptom relief, here's the Band-Aid. It's like you don't have a Prozac deficiency. You have a thyroid hormone deficiency. So it, everything is low and slow and the thyroid is not working. Uh, yep, that is so beautifully stated. And I let's, let's dive into the testing a little bit and like what you consider good testing because I consider reverse T3 a part of that and I love that you do too. And it's such a good indicator of stuff. Yeah. And then I just had somebody ask a question is like, so would my thyroid affect 
my slow, like my gastroparesis, my slow transit time of my movements. Mm -hmm. And also like, let's discuss how that can go the other way and what things might be affecting your thyroid and making it into more of a hypothyroid state. So yeah, let's talk about kind of both directions of how thyroid can affect that, how that can affect thyroid, and then how you like to test. Yeah, okay, so gastroparesis, I see a ton. And sometimes it's properly diagnosed, like that patient actually does have something going on where the nerves are not firing and they have that slow motility. Other times they'll get the diagnosis of gastroparesis, but really once we start optimizing their thyroid and that gut motility increases, all of a sudden they're like, oh, hey, I don't need the med that my doctor put me on to help me go every day. Now that my thyroid's functioning, the movement is happening. And of course we wanna work backwards, like you said, and heal the gut too. So if someone has H. pylori, if they have parasites, if they have candida is a big one. That will then affect, well, number one, if we're treating your thyroid and we're giving you the thyroid hormone replacement that you need, you might not absorb all of that. You know, we might be giving you the, I'll call it medication, but I like calling it thyroid hormone replacement. We'll be giving you the thyroid hormone replacement and it's like, oh, it's not working. It's not working. This person isn't feeling better. The numbers aren't going up. What's going on? Well, it's not getting absorbed because the gut is so messed up that it can't even absorb the medication. So we have to then kind of work from the gut and then expand out. Now, on, side note to that, because I'm, I'm famous for bitching about this on my <laughs> podcast, you're not going to produce more T3 on your own or testosterone or estradiol or progesterone or whatever it is just by healing your gut. Like I call BS on those programs that are like, I can heal your thyroid by healing your gut. Like, no, you're going to help the whole body, but you're not all of a sudden going to take a person from a T3 level of a 2.3 to a 3.8 by doing some gut healing protocol. You want to do, I have a, 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 a saying that I always say on my podcast and my practice, both and we have to do it at the same time. Gut healing is amazing. hundred percent. Let's address what's going on. But we also better be addressing that low thyroid function and the low hormones that are showing on your labs. Yep. And that's, I yeah. mean, and the hormones play such a huge role in our body's ability to build and recover yeah. and heal. And if you don't have the signals for your cellular energy, it's going to be really hard to heal anything else. Yeah. But if you are still dealing with a messed up gut or you're not detoxifying, then you're going to have a really hard time healing anything just by giving it hormones. So that's why you have to kind of do everything all at oh. once, like you're saying. Once. So yeah. let's dive in a little bit to like what reverse T3 can represent. Why, like, I don't understand why it's not tested more because it's used to predict mortality in hospitals. So like, why would we not keep an eye on it? And no. let's talk a little bit about how, if you're, because I know you've talked before about like over converting T4 into reverse T3 and then how that can actually affect whatever T3 is present and how it's affecting your cells and what you like to do for your lab testing to really understand what's going on with someone. Yeah. So reverse T3, it is the anti-thyroid hormone. So the, the analogy that I love to give to get people to understand is a bouncer. It's a bouncer outside your cell door. So picture a little cell, and on that cell, there's a receptor site for T3. T3 is the active thyroid hormone. T3 comes in. And it's like a lock and key attaches to that receptor site on the cell. Now, if reverse T3 is elevated, it's a bouncer standing outside that cell door telling all the little T3 hormones that they can't get in tonight. You're not getting in. You're not getting in. And it's literally blocking that T3 receptor from getting to the cell. Now, there are, are functional practitioners out there listening. They're like, it doesn't actually block it. it Bear with me. This is an analogy here. This is a way to get people to understand that reverse T3 elevated is bad. It is going to block that T3. And I got to tell you, I have seen people, I was just reviewing labs before we jumped on, a woman has a reverse T3 of a 32 and her free T3 is actually elevated. Why? Because it's floating around in her blood. It can't get in. She's not hyper. She's not hyperthyroid, she's hypo, but her reverse T3 is so high, it's actually clinically high, it's actually marked with an H. It's so high that her free T3 is just building up in her bloodstream. 
So yeah, it's, it's crazy when you see it. And then when you lower that reverse T3, the T3 can do its job. So what I tell people too, is if you hear from your doctor, we only test reverse T3 in a clinical setting, such as the ER, the ICU, it's kind of a no duh moment. It's like, duh, if someone's laying there from an injury, a trauma, an infection, oh, oh, pick me. I can predict that their reverse C3 is going to be high because our bodies are so beautifully built. It's a survival mechanism. Your body knows that when you're lying there recovering from something traumatic, you don't need to burn fat. You don't need to grow your hair. You don't need to think. You don't need to feel good. You need to survive and heal. And that's what reverse T3 is built into us to do. Thank God it's there. But we don't want it elevated when we're trying to walk around and live life. So, yes. Yes. Thank you. That was beautiful. Gosh, it's so nice to talk to somebody who also cares about reverse T3. So the way that I look at it is like if reverse T3 is high, I, I look at the thyroid as the sentinel of the body. Like it is your big sensor that is monitoring over your whole system. If it's off, if your reverse T3 is high, there's like infection or injury or some kind of damage going on in the body that I need to look for. And I would much rather catch it when it's low and like we're just catching the injury before it turns into some symptom where you end up in the ER. So it's like, that's why I like keeping track of it. And I loved your description of the bouncer. And I just, for anyone listening where it's like some of this information is new to you, I'm gonna give you the little metaphor that I like to use for people of understanding your whole thyroid in like 30 seconds. Yes, so, do it. Yes, so TSH is like a dispatch station. It stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, it actually comes from your brain and it wants your thyroid to be more active. So it's like a dispatch sending a signal out. T4 is like the car that drives to the sites. It doesn't actually do anything, it just gets you there. And then when you get there, you have to get out of the car and that's T3. So T3 is like the person going into the site. And then reverse T3 is like the person being like, no, 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 you can't come into this site. This isn't the right site. And then you have TPO antibodies, which is like the people or like someone came and damaged all the cars at the station and they can't really go anywhere and then thyroglobulin is like when there's too many people at the dispatch station and there's too many cars going out so that's like a general metaphor that i like to use for people to understand so tsh dispatch station t4 car going out t3 person getting out of the car reverse t3 preventing the person getting out of the car from going in tpo means not enough signals going out and thyroglobulin means too many signals going out so that's kind of how i shortly define the thyroid conditions and please feel free to add on to that however you like that's good <laughs> i love that i might have to use that but no that, that's amazing that's amazing that's perfect perfectly said i just want people to understand their bodies and how they work more because mm -hmm. it's i think our current healthcare system though well-intentioned can be really disempowering because it's like everyone just tells you oh you're fine and no one actually tells you what's going on and happening what's going on why i love the type of work that you do so let's also dive into because this one i'll admit like this one's newer for me i have not learned as much about t2 i would love if you could expand on that mm, i love t2 so started studying this thyroid hormone about 15 years ago. So T2 is a thyroid hormone. Your thyroid gland makes T1, T2, T3, T4. So we just went over T3 and T4. T4 is inactive, that's the car, getting it. T3 is active, that's when it gets out, attaches to the receptor site. We also have T1 and T2. T1 is, is inactive, we can set that aside. Let's just put it over here. It's kind of like T4, inactive. T2 is very active. It's very much like T3 in that it increases our metabolism. It works at the mitochondrial level to increase ATP production. It stimulates brown adipose tissue, the BAT, which brown adipose tissue is what we want. That's why we jump into cold water. That's why we do the cold plunges. That is what we're doing when we're doing the, the cold thermogenesis is we're activating our BAT and decreasing our wet or white adipose tissue. We don't want the white, that's the squishy stuff. That's the stuff that you grab and you're like, I really want this gone off of my side or my stomach or my thighs. And the white adipose tissue is what clogs our organs too. That's that visceral fat that we hear is connected to disease states like cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, right? So we want 
that white fat's brown. And the brown fat has a ton of mitochondrial in it. And that's what makes it brown, actually. It has, it has iron and it has uh, mitochondria. So that's what gives it that brownish beige color. That brown adipose tissue is highly metabolically active. It's always on fire. It's always working. And it's helping you to burn your own stored white fat. So we want to activate that brown fat, and that's what T2 does. Now, here's the difference. T3, fantastic thyroid hormone. If you need it, you need it. If you need it, we give it. And we have optimal lab value ranges for it. T2, we don't have a way to test it yet. It's been tested in the studies. So the published studies that are done on rats and humans, they have an assay for T2, which you can't walk down to your lab for and say, hey, can you test my T2? But here's the thing with T2. It does not have a cardiovascular effect. It does not have a thyromimetic effect, meaning it's not going to change your thyroid lab value. So when I give you T3, I'm going to look at your T3. I'm going to see that T3 change. Here's the other thing that's going to happen. TSH is going to become suppressed when I give you T3 medication. So let's say you walk into your PCP and he or she looks at your TSH and it's down. It's below a one. They're going to go, oh, my God, you're hyper. We need to take away your medication. Give me that. Take it away. And you're like, wait, I finally feel good. Why are you taking away my medication? But you can appear hyperthyroid when we give you T3. Some people will also experience a little bit of jitteriness, anxiety, heart palpitations. I have a couple of patients that they just flat out can't tolerate it at all. They get so anxious and I call it icky and sticky. It's like they feel like they're crawling out of their skin to where we either can't use T3, we have to change it to a compounded, we have to reduce their dose way, way, way low. This is where T2 comes in. It does not have a cardiovascular effect, I meaning you're not gonna get those heart palpitations. You're not gonna get the, the high elevated heart rate. You're not gonna get the thyroid numbers changing to where your doctor thinks that you're hyper. You're only going to get an increased base of metabolic rate, which, oh my God, who doesn't want that, right? I mean, we are in a world of obesity. We are in a world where our kids are actually obese by the age of 10 and 11. They're, they have type 2 diabetes in, in grade school. So we need an answer. And, and the GLPs that have come out, the, the Ozempic, Terzepatide, I'll call it the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss. Yeah, they come with their own set of side effects. They're fantastic for the true type 2 diabetics, but they're being abused. We need a different answer for the obesity epidemic. We need a different answer for all of us out there who are doing all the right things but still can't lose weight. And this is where T2 comes in. So I, I jokingly say, like, you can burn fat on your couch while watching Netflix. You really can. It's increasing your basal metabolic rate, that baseline metabolism that you have sitting here doing nothing. When you increase that, you're burning stored body fat. You're activating that brown adipose tissue. It's also working, like I said earlier, on the mitochondria to produce more ATP. So you're not going to feel, when you take T2, you're not going to feel amped up. You're not going to feel jittery. This isn't a fat burner from the 90s. It's a nice, steady energy. It's like this balanced, beautiful energy through the day that people want and desire. Because most of the time I'm hearing people say like, like around one or two o'clock, I'm ready for a nap. I can't get through my afternoon. That's when I crash. And that's where T2 can come in to give you that nice, steady energy. The other beauty is you don't need to beg your doctor for it. It's in supplemental form. It is not in prescription form. So when I started studying this 15 years ago, I did a trial run with my patients that I had at the time. And many of them were, were just taking T4 only. They were experiencing all of the symptoms. They couldn't lose weight no matter what they did. And this particular, it's 3,5-diodoelthyronine is the chemical name for T2, the structural chemical name. It was in a product, but it was in, I call it the bro science. Like, you know, like the dude products, the bodybuilding <laughs> products. The, the supplements that have like really super angry names, right? So we, I found, <laughs> I found and used it 
with some of my patients, but a lot of them were like, why am I taking something that's like, has like a gorilla on the front with claw marks? Like, <laughs> is this going to kill me? You know? I'm like, no, just trust me. But here's the thing. I saw changes and they saw changes. They lost weight. They felt better. Like all their symptoms started to improve. So that made me go, there was really something to this. That's when I dove into the research. Diving into the research, we see the studies where individuals given T2 daily at a dose of 150 to 300 micrograms. Now, I cap it at 150 in my product and thyroid fixer just because that is enough. You, you don't have to go higher. You don't need to spend more money. You don't need to take more than you need. But in the studies, it showed in 28 days, an average weight loss of nine pounds and a 4% reduction in body fat. So when you're talking about body fat percent, 4% is a lot. So it's not like four pounds, it's 4% of your body fat mass. So that was a huge game changer right there from the studies. And then just even, last thing I'll say about it, just so it's worth mentioning, when you look at bodybuilders, the population that I came from 20 years ago, they really were the OGs of biohacking. Like we were using peptides before all y'all were using peptides. Like we were experimenting on ourselves and all that. So I saw a, a pro bodybuilder trainer talk about this years ago. And he would say, you know, when I have a competitor, especially a female competitor, I do not let her use T3. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because, yes, T3 is abused in the bodybuilding community to burn fat and get ready for a show. He goes, I don't let my women use T3 because here's what's going to happen. They're going to lose the body fat. They're also going to lose muscle mass because T3 can burn your muscle too in addition to fat. And they're going to come out the other side with a thyroid problem. And then they're going to be on thyroid medication the rest of their life. T2, he goes, I only use T2 with my women because it's going to burn their fat, not going to touch their muscle, and they're not going to have a thyroid problem at the end of it. And I was like, oh, beautifully said, thank you. But just hearing that confirmed everything that I saw with my patients, read in the studies. It just, I, I think it's, it's a game changer. It is a game changer for us right now. Wow, like I love that and to my understanding like on the physiological side so t3 will induce beta oxidation which is like burning your fat guys and glyco or glycolysis basically like helping your liver to burn fat but t2 will affect beta oxidation but not glycolysis so well, it, it does help the liver to burn fat in terms of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease there are some studies on that on the now fed um so we are seeing an improvement in fatty liver when we're using T2 in a positive way. Got it. Thank you. That was yeah. awesome. So I've been just keeping track of a couple questions that came up and I want to make sure to yeah. address them. So I'm going to try to consolidate these into like one good question as best I can. Um, one, one person was asking like, if you have hyperthyroidism, I've heard that cold plunges are not great for you. So I'd love if we could tie what we're talking about in a little bit to things like adrenals and like mm -hmm. the afternoon crash that you're talking about and like how the thyroid and the adrenals affect each other and like why a cold plunge might affect that. Mm -hmm. And then let's do a secondary question of like, someone's asking like, if you have a thyroid cyst, but thyroid levels are normal and they wanna do a thyroidectomy, what mm -hmm. are your feelings on that? Okay. So let's start with the first one and then we'll go to the second one. Okay, so first one, cold plunges. I mean, even if you have hypothyroidism, the, the, a few studies that I saw were really interesting. When you're hypothyroid, you tend to be intolerant to the cold. I mean, these are the people that are wearing sweaters and it's 70 degrees. When you start to do cold plunges, as counterintuitive as that sounds, your body starts the adaptation process. So it will start to regulate your, your temperature, your basal body temperature, to be more tolerant to the cold. So it actually can be beneficial. I mean, obviously when you're hypo and your metabolism is low, cold plunges are great because it's gonna stimulate brown adipose tissue. So if you stack that with T2, then you're really doing something for your body to lower your body fat stores. But you're also regulating. So you're going to be, your, your body temperature, you're gonna be more in a normal state when you're around people. All those people are like, why are you so cold? It's comfortable here. 
you're going to balance out to their level, which is a bonus. Hyperthyroid patients who do, we have to remember that whether it's a cold plunge, whether it's an infrared sauna, hot yoga, they are stressors on the body. Now, they are good stressors because they produce an effect in our body that we, you know, we increase thermogenesis, we detox, we sweat. I mean, all of those, those stressors chosen, <laughs> chosen physical stressors have a positive benefit. But when you're hyper, your adrenals are amped up a little bit. You know, it's kind of like if you think of hyper, just think of a hyper kid, like dee, 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 always like, ah, and, and think of your adrenals as being like, ah, and, and they just can't handle any more stress. You know, when you are hyper, you need to calm, you need to chill, you need to get into that parasympathetic state. You don't want to do things necessarily that are going to amp you up even higher. They're going to kick your adrenals up and say, you know, hey, what are you doing to us? We're already on like high alert here. And now you're throwing us into a, into a cold plunge. What are you doing? So that, that's where I would say until you can get things under control with hyper, I would avoid the cold plunges. And plus your metabolism is usually through the roof. Now, occasionally I'll have patients that swing from hyper to hypo. They usually swing from the autoimmune form Graves disease to Hashimoto's. And that's very common. But when you're in that hyper state, that's when I would avoid the cold thermogenesis. When you swing into the Hashimoto low state, then you can bring that back in. Beautiful. Thank you. I, I love tying this into the whole like HPA axis along with gonadal. And like someone was also asking about, you know, would this type of thing affect my testosterone? And I know I still have that other question about the cyst, but these are such good questions. I just, yeah. I, and that's why I do these is, and do them live is so that people can ask because it. it lets us know what you guys want to know more about and then we can do more on it. So someone asked, right. um, and we'll come back, let's come back to the thyroidectomy one in a second. Mm -hmm. But since we're talking about hormones, uh, she was saying, I don't have thyroid issues, but I'm the, on the lower end of testosterone would T2 or something like that help with some of the sex hormones? And even sex hormones are tied into your adrenals and things like that. So even though we're talking yeah. about the thyroid, just know that all of these systems are connected. And that's why it's really helpful to work with a practitioner because they'll kind of be looking at the big picture and how everything is interacting. Yeah, my second favorite hormone is testosterone because I call it our get stuff done hormone. I'll be nice. Our get stuff done hormone. And if we don't have enough testosterone, you're gonna feel the same symptoms as hypothyroidism. Your motivation is gonna be low, libido low, metabolism low. You can't put on muscle no matter how heavy you lift at the gym. Um, you can't burn body fat. So I love testosterone. So if you have a low testosterone level, we need to address that. Sometimes, remember the thyroid is the master gland. When we optimize the thyroid, oftentimes I will see sex hormones improve. But sometimes we need to use testosterone replacement. Now there are supplements out there, even in my fixer line, I have hormone fixer, which is specifically for low female testosterone. It will, I mean, it has, it has a Tonkata Lee in it, it has tribulus terrestris in it it will increase your natural levels of testosterone. But if they're in the toilet, I like using bioidentical testosterone. So I wouldn't necessarily throw, I mean, T2 can have an indirect effect, just like improving your thyroid function, checking those levels, all of that, addressing anything that's low, will have an indirect effect on all the sex hormones. But again, sometimes we need to bring in the hormone itself. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's tie this into that other question. So we had the other question about, um, like, if you have a thyroid cyst, but your levels are normal, should you get a thyroidectomy? And let's also tie that into, like, when hormone replacement therapy is appropriate and mm -hmm. when you might want to be more careful and why you should always work with a practitioner who knows what they're doing when you're doing it. Yeah. Um, okay. Cysts, nodules. Whenever you have a growth on a body part and organ gland, that's usually an indication that something's going on with that organ gland. I don't buy the fact 
that there's not a problem. If somebody's telling you that you need a thyroidectomy, there's a problem. There's a reason for it. I mean, there's no doctor in the world that should be telling you that you just need to rip your thyroid out because of a nodule, because of a growth on it. That's silly. Now, if they biopsy it and they found cancer cells in it, that's when we start talking about thyroidectomy, partial thyroidectomy. Or if you are in that grave state, my best friend's mom, I dealt with her a couple of years ago. She was swinging from hyper to hypo. I mean, every week we'd be adjusting her methamazole and then adjusting the Synthroid and then adjusting the teeth. I mean, it was like this pendulum swing. So for her, the best course of action was get the thyroidectomy. We're gonna start at baseline now and rebuild your thyroid hormones through thyroid hormone replacement. But in other people, I see so many women, and I actually have a podcast out there called Don't Cry Over a Lost Thyroid. I have women crying because they gave in to their doctor and they had their thyroid taken out. And then they come out the other side, they're given T4 only, that's a whole nother talk. They're given T4 only, it doesn't work, they gain weight, they, they hate their life, and they regret having their thyroid out. Well, was it taken out because they needed it or because they didn't need it? That's case by case basis. Some people had cancer that they needed it out. Some people, unfortunately, were told to get it out and they didn't need it out. But to anyone that has a thyroidectomy, I would say, don't worry about it. We can rebuild those hormones. You just have to be working with the right person that's not gonna just give you T4 only, that's really gonna work to get you into that optimal state and rebuild that T4 and T3. Check the reverse T3. Look at the whole picture. Listen to you with your symptoms. So we can do it. And I know that was a long answer to a short question. Back to the original question, I, I don't like the fact that you're just saying I have nodules, my thyroid's normal, and they want to take it out. I want more info. I want full labs on that. I would want to know if you had a biopsy. I would want to know the reason. I would grill your doctor before going under the knife and get a reason for that thyroidectomy. What's the rest of your body doing? Like, what's your gut doing? What are your adrenals doing? How's your brain? How are your mitochondria functioning? Because if there's mm -hmm. a nodule on the thyroid to me, there's like some kind of inflammation or toxicity or infection present that uh, I'd be looking for. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I love this talk because I know, you know, like hormone therapy is sometimes just totally ex nade, but it absolutely has its place for the right people. And especially when you're working with the right practitioner, it's being done safely. It's just one of those things that needs to be tracked. Like you just, you can't just like give someone a dose and then not pay attention to it and not notice how their body is changing with it. So that's kind of just the take that I think you and I both have on that. So I love that. So let's talk like as we kind of wrap up and wind down, so what are ways that people can naturally balance their thyroid in their life and kind of work on preventing or reversing autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's or thyroglobulin yeah. and like just doing it naturally. And then there's also, you know, the concept of using hormones to do it and however you want to talk about it. Okay. So first of all, if you have Hashimoto's, we know that it's, an inflammatory state, it's an autoimmune condition where your body is attacking your thyroid. So the number one thing you can do, and I know you're gonna roll your eyes when you hear this, people, is go gluten-free. Uh, everybody tells me to go gluten-free, gluten-free, gluten-free. Yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason for can it. And I also so, yes. just say, like, I've had so many patients be like, it runs in my family, it's genetic. Mm. You may have a tendency towards it, but it's not supposed to be happening. So I just wanted to toss that in there. Well, three-legged stool. Do you talk about the three-legged stool? Yeah. So you can have that genetic component of one of the legs. Yeah, maybe mom, grandma, auntie had it too. And then you have the leaky gut and you have the trigger. Now, the leaky gut and the trigger can kind of be combined because we know that gluten causes a leaky gut. But so does toxins and all the crap that we're exposed to and what we put in our bodies and our piss poor food supply. So all of that can cause leaky gut. But then over here you have the trigger that could be gluten exposure. It can also, listen, it can be a stressor. 
It can be a hormone. It can be pregnancy, which is a natural stressor, but it's such a hormonal shift in the body that that's oftentimes where we see that autoimmune switch turn on. But here's the thing with gluten. Again, another analogy. So with Hashimoto's, you got these little soldiers and the soldiers are in their barracks and they're confused soldiers. They think your thyroid is a bad guy. So they like to go out and launch an attack every so often. So they go out and they attack the thyroid gland. They beat it up. Then they go back to their barracks. And they go out and they beat it up. And then they go back. So if you eat gluten, molecularly, it has a similar structure and looks like the thyroid gland. Now, it's actually the gliadin protein molecule of gluten that looks like the thyroid gland. So the soldiers see it and they go, hey, it's an invader. It's that, it's that bad thyroid thing. And they launch an attack all because you ate gluten. And they thought, here comes the bad guy again. Let's go all out war. So every time you eat gluten, you are, yes, you're damaging your gut, but you're launching an attack. You're building your army. And that's the last thing you want to do when you have Hashimoto's. We ultimately want those TPO and TJ antibodies at zero. So cut out gluten, add in something like black cumin seed oil. That's another one of my line. I actually made Hashimoto's fixer because black cumin seed oil has huge, huge studies on lowering antibodies. I had one patient message me. She's like, my antibodies dropped by 200 and I've just been taking Hashimoto's fixer. So do things like black cumin seed to lower antibodies and then work on all the other parts that can contribute. So yeah, back to the gut. You got candida, you got H. pylori, dysbiosis of any kind, you better be working on that because that's highly inflammatory. It's allowing those lipopolysaccharides to pass through the gut lining, go systemic, go into your bloodstream, cause inflammation. When your body's inflamed, it's not going to work well. You know, I don't care if you have a, 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 an injury in your knee and that's inflamed and you can't walk well, or whether you have inflammation in your entire body, that's preventing your body from working at its top level. So we want to take down that inflammation when there's autoimmune. Or we want to take down inflammation all the time, but we want to take down that inflammation when there's autoimmune present. Yes, absolutely, because it keeps the whole immune system hyperactivated and keeps those soldiers way too busy and just kind of yeah. keeps them in alert mode. And when you have alert mm -hmm. mode, then you're more likely to also develop more food sensitivities from the leaky gut that you have, and then you become oddly sensitive to an innocuous food like a banana or whatever. And, you know, gliadin, the molecule that she's talking about, it's also found in oats. Not everyone's drinking yes. oat milk these days. And like oat milk is basically just a giant sugar bomb with a lot of bad fats, unless you like literally uh. put it at home yourself and it's still a sugar bomb. So it's like, just keep in mind that there's also cross reactions to these things. So if you're dealing with thyroid autoimmune, like gluten, bread, oats, probably just not your best friend at the moment. So just something to know. <clears throat> yeah. And then, you know, someone's asking like, what are the exact tests to check for to see if you have Hashimoto's? It's just a TPO antibody test. Like to me, a f like, let's just go over a quick full thyroid panel for anyone listening. TSH, mm -hmm. free T3, free T4, reverse T3, TPO antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. You can also do like oh. other forms of T3 and T4. That's what I usually run. Anything different that you like to run? That's perfect. That's exactly what I run awesome. too. Yeah, love that. Okay, so and then one of the other questions I wanted to bring up is ways that you can protect your thyroid. And that comes down to ways that we nourish the thyroid, like things like minerals, like selenium, mm -hmm. iodine, you can consume too much of those. So just know they're kind of like those Goldilocks nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, but any other opinions that you have around protecting the thyroid, because some people don't know that like in order to make your thyroid hormone, you actually produce um, free radicals, which are like, uh, kind of byproducts that can damage your tissues and selenium is one of the things that replenishes your glutathione so that you can actually protect your tissues so i'd love mm -hmm. um any other protective things people can do themselves at home as a part of their daily life well like you said iodine i actually have a podcast where i call it the the goldilocks because it is it's that it's that well it's an element that goldilocks element iodine that when you look at the functional community you're going to see a 50 50 split you're going to see 50% of practitioners saying thyroid patients, specifically Hashimoto patients, should not use iodine. And you're going to have 50% that say they should. 
So we just have to break it down, use common sense and look at science. Iodine is a protector of the body. It's one of the oldest remedies. I mean, World War II, soldiers carried iodine for everything. You got a wound, you're sick, uh, you got a sniffle, let's put some iodine in you or on you and it will cure it all. So iodine is, is such a beautiful detoxifier. It will actually bind to the other halides in your body that are very, very toxic to your thyroid gland. They're toxic to the whole body, but they're toxic to your thyroid gland. So chlorine, fluoride, remember those fluoride treatments you got as a kid? Yeah, not good for your thyroid. Bromide that is present in Mountain Dew and is something that you soak in if you have a hot tub. <laughs> So chlorine is in your water system. So every time you take a shower, you're exposed to chlorine unless you have a whole water filtration system, which I hope you do, but not everybody can afford that. So let's take some iodine to bind to those halides to protect our thyroid and excrete them out of their body. Now, on top of that, iodine actually helps with that conversion process of T4 to T3. It will help to lower reverse T3. Uh, it's it's so beneficial to the body. And I was interviewing, oh gosh, I forget who I was interviewing. We were talking about testing. We were talking about HTMA testing. And I said, do you test for iodine? And he goes, well, no, because every cell in the body needs it. So why wouldn't you just take it? And I'm like, hmm, good call. Now, like you said, some people are, if they increase their iodine too much, they'll actually get a little bit hyper-y. Like they'll kind of feel like that jittery heart palpitation thing. Okay, just reduce it. I mean, it's that easy. Just pull back on the dose. You're not doing damage. You're, that's just your body saying, hey, you're taking too much. So just pull back a little bit. But it's so beneficial. I mean, breast cancer, if you look at, look at Dr. David Brownstein's work, oh my gosh, he was... He was smearing iodine on women's breasts who had breast cancer, um, hair loss, fibrocystic breast disease. I mean, everything can be connected back to iodine. So if I was given the option of only taking one supplement for the rest of my life, like if you're like, you got to pick one, well, I have like 50 downstairs, but you got to pick one. I would pick iodine. Hmm. I mean, well, yeah, that, 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 that would be what I would pick. I love that. It's, it's such an interesting molecule. It can even help protect against like radiation and different things like that. Um, and mm -hmm. also, I just want to tell you guys, remember that none of this is all educational. None of this is medical advice. Always please right. consult your practitioner with everything we're talking about. But I love teaching you cool things. So yeah. there is this other thing that you can do at home where you can get like the iodine that you would paint on a wound. You can like paint a strip on your arm. If you absorb it over 24 hours, you probably could use a little more iodine. If you don't absorb it, you probably don't need more. However, the proper way to do it is through like a urinary test that also does um, like a stimulation beforehand to actually measure it correctly. So that's mm -hmm. why working with a practitioner is really helpful. But I just, you know, there's so many old school remedies that have just totally been lost from our society and I want to keep oh. them alive and I want people to know about them. So I love that. Yeah. Um, I see another question. We can't totally give like dosage recommendations online. So that will be something you have to consult your practitioner about. Then someone else to ask Asked, like when iodine binds the halides, can it push it out and become visible? She said on the teeth near the waterline, for example. Not sure if I'm interested. I've never heard of that. Mm -mm. Mm, I'm, yeah, yeah, no. Like if it's binding to fluoride, you're not going to see it. Like you're not you're not going to see it excreting. Mm -mm. Got it. Um, okay, beautiful. Well, I know you have other stuff coming up, so let's just kind of wrap up with like, how do you like to manage your own thyroid health? And if people wanted to find out more about you or connect with you, where would you direct them? Yeah, absolutely. So my own thyroid health. Uh, number one, I'm gluten-free. I take the proper dose of thyroid hormone replacement to keep me at an optimal level. And that's very nuanced. I mean, there is not a one size fits all here. I have worked with patients that, uh, tens of thousands at this point, and there is absolutely not a one size fits all. I get asked the question all the time, well, what's your favorite dose of T3? I'm like, the one that's going to work for you. So <laughs> it's really about personal, this is where personalized medicine comes in. It's about personalized treatment and looking at all the other factors. Like I keep an eye on my insulin. I keep an eye on my testosterone, my estrogen, my progesterone, all of it to stay at an optimal state. And that's where you are going to live your best life. Diet, so. 
for the most part, but I still live. You know what I mean? Like I, I listen, I had wings last night and I had some pumpkin beer that kicked my ass. Like, you know, I, I listen, I am not perfect and nor do I claim to be because I want people to know you don't, right. You don't have to be this pristine eater that never touches gluten. We're just saying, hey, go gluten-free most of the time, right? Because it's going to help you. Clean up your diet. Get out the processed foods most of the time, but you still have to live. So, yes, I still live, but I stay in optimization land where I stay optimized. I feel great. I'm active. I'm, I'm vibrant. I have energy through the day. My weight is stable, even if I enjoy something here and there. Uh, but it's a, it's a great place to be. I, I invite you all to optimization land. It's a great place to live. So uh, if you are interested in working with me, you can go to my website at dramyhorneman.com. You can click on book a call. And there's an application process. We want to make sure you're serious. We want to make sure that we're all going to work together nicely. So we go through your health. We go through what you've already tried, what you've been through. We answer your questions. And then if you're a good fit, we'll go over the different programs. But we can prescribe to all 50 states. So it doesn't matter where you are. We can also prescribe to certain provinces in Canada. So yeah, get in touch if you want to work together. And then if you're curious about this T2 thing that we were talking about, you can go to my website, to my store. I have a fixer line of supplements. So what we're talking about is thyroid fixer that contains T2. And that is on betterlifedoctor.com. Better Life Doctor. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this. This was awesome and contains so much good information. I'm sure I'll be sharing it with plenty of people. And for anyone that found this information useful, please like share this video and let people know this information's out there. And I also saw someone asking like, you know, what's a good supplement line for this? She has her own supplement line that she designed for all of this stuff. So check out oh, Thyroid this Victor, specifically. Yep. And that you can that you can find that on her website, which repeat that website one more time betterlifedoctor.com because better, life. better hormones, better thyroid equals a better life. Fantastic. Like, I love it. And for anyone wanting to reach out to us, um, feel free to message us here on Instagram or you can go to our websites and contact us that way. But we're always here for you and I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.